Eternus Continuum's ground force is led by Axion Veil. She has a scourge named Nox, as well as Harlan Sec, the curator. She also has a marauder named Ulrich, a grafter named Kiefer, and a vassal reaver squad supported by a raker. Warcaster Nomark Rack Neron is an overall commander of the mission from his ship. His starting rack includes Kinetic Accelerator, Mortality Destabilizer, Plexus Densifier, Pyrokinetic Surge, and Recall Initiative. The Empyrean's ground force is led by Astrius, Aeon of the First Order. He has a sentinel named Pulse, a demon named Nova. He's also being supported by a factotum, a fulcrum, an oculus, and a saber strike force. Warcaster Aeon Draska is an overall command of the mission from her ship. Her starting rack includes Cryolock, Divination Algorithm, Encrypted Command, Temporal Cycle, and Velocity Projector. Eternus Continuum won the starting roll to go first. We played Skirmish Mission, Spontaneous Combustion, with the three objectives being represented by our Cantric Turbines the Continuum is using in an attempt to bring an inert void gate back to life. For terrain layout, we drew diagonal lines across the spaces between the objectives with hills, buildings, and walls. A Turnus Continuum was deployed slightly offset to the left center of their table edge, with Harlan Sec to the far left, Knox in the center, and Vale along with Ulrich to the right. The Empyreans were deployed slightly offset to the right center of their table edge, with Pulse and a Factotum near a stone wall. An expedition directed by Harlan Sec discovered a seemingly long forgotten feudal world known as Fargon. Not long after Sec and his entourage arrived on the planet, the Archantric turbines that powered the gate seemed to malfunction, halting the advance of the Continuum of Reinforcements. As Sec and his companions investigated the trouble with the turbines, they quickly discovered the source of the problem the ancient robotic beings known as Empyreans. Pulse Round 1 Eternus Continuum Turn 1 Neron sent a surge of arcanescence charging through Ulrich and sent the Marauder towards the central turbine. Harlan Sec established a position by the nearest turbine and began to restart the Archantric device. Ulrich opened a void gate near a large stone tower. Empyreans, turn one. Sending a charge into the Factotum, Draska reached out to her sentinel. The Aeon recalibrated the Warjack's long-range weaponry, as she instructed him. Pulse, advance towards the central turbine, and eliminate the robotic human moving in your direction. Confirm. The Sentinel replied. Once in position, the massive Warjack unleashed a barrage from all three of his ranged weapons, though only the first shot struck its target.
The factotum hovered near the closest turbine, working to power it down, and then sent a jolt of energy into the center, enlivening the Warjack's control mechanism. Unable to mount the level of effective offense she had hoped, Draska knew she'd need every servitor at the ready. She sent encoded instructions to reset the factotum's main system board. The squiddy servitor then opened a gate behind Pulse. A turn is continuum. Turn two. Neron charged his scourge with Ark and sent him to engage the Sentinel. Nox's holophage cannon bathed the larger warjack in corrosive muck. Vale moved up near a small stone tower, catching sight of the sentinel in the distance. Neron channeled a burst of fire through his weaver towards Pulse, but the flames crashed harmlessly into the side of a large tower. Kiefer and Sergeant Tarbus's reaver squad stepped through the gate, each heading to a different side of the large tower. Empyreans. Turn two. Draska empowered her sentinel and instructed the factotum to repair the damage to Pulse. Pulse then turned his arsenal on three of the cultists moving towards the central turbine. Ulrich's body was shredded as the phased projectile cannon tore through his armor. The Warjack's second shot flew wide, with Veil vale ducking under the time-altering blast. Lastly, the Sentinel's Starfire Ray came to life, coursing through Nox. The Eternus Weaver survived the second attempt on her life unharmed. Stepping through the gate, Astrius took his rightful place of command on the battlefield. Flanked by a Saber Strike Force. The fastidious Factotum opened another Void Gate, as the previous one faded into the ether. Eternus Continuum, Turn 3. After Neron infused the squad with Ark, Tarvis led his unit around the tower. The Reaver stumbled as his attack missed the Empyrean Gate, but the Raker fared better, tearing at it with its giant mandibles. Only one of the Sabres fell as the rest of the squad showered its strike force in a hail of gunfire. The grafter changed course, heading around the back of the tower to support the reavers. Needing more heavy support on the ground, Neron sent a second marauder named Demos through the void gate. Yeah. 
Vale opened another gate ahead of herself and Knox. Empyreans. Turn three. Draska charged the strike force. As Astria showered Vale and Knox with his Starfire array. then drove his plasma spear into the Eternus Void Gate. The remaining sabers moved to protect the Factotum and exact a measure of revenge on the Vassal Reavers. The first saber cut into the Raker with its fusion blade. The second cut down Prinza in a gory display. The Solus Automaton then blasted the Raker with its ion cannon, obliterating the four-legged robotic beast. The Eternus Void Gate was consumed in the flames. But the Sentinel washed its armor clear of the acid, triggering a biohazard containment response system. Pulse Round 2 Eternus Continuum Turn one. Knox felt a rush of arcanescence pouring into his circuitry as the Nomark amped up the power of the Warjack's melee weapons. The Marauder moved to get Pulse in his sights and spun up his shredder, sending rounds plinking harmlessly off the Sentinel's defense matrix. Nox moved closer to the Empyrean's advancing line and slammed his force rod into Astrius, sending the Aeon falling backwards into a row of hay bales. The Eternus Warjack then struck Pulse with his Wrecking Claw. The force of the blow drove the larger Warjack into the large stone tower. Before the Sentinel could recover, Nox bathed him again in corrosive slime. The Empyrean War Machine triggered his force barrier to stave off any further immediate damage. Empyreans. Turn 1. Boosting Pulse's arc once again, Draska sent the Factone to work feverishly, repairing what it could of the damage sustained by the Sentinel. Strike Force continued to attack the Vassal Squad and Grafter, but only Tarvis was felled in the onslaught.
not wanting to risk the loss of a venerable Aeon such as Astrius. The Empyrean Warcaster teleported her ground commander back aboard her ship for immediate repairs. A turn is continual. Turn two. Neron charged Sec and reanimated the corpses of the slain Vassal Reavers. Harlan Sec faced into the ether. Reappearing near Knox before moving to confront the Factotum. The mercenary cut into the servitor with his fusion blade. But the tentacled bot dies the flux disruptor shot that followed. The Reaver surrounded the northernmost turbine. Sergeant Tarvis's nailer put an end to the Vactotum. While Brax cut down the first saber. The second mechanical warrior deflected Prince's attack. Neron sent a curse crackling into Pulse. The Sentinel activated his force barrier in time, but only managed to deflect a portion of the damage. The Eternus Warcaster then brought his Scourge to the ship's repair bay. and the grafter opened another gate near the reavers. Empyreans, turn two. Draska once more charged her sentinel before reactivating what remained of the Saber Strike Force. Pulse closed in on the Marauder and let loose with nearly the full barrage of his deadly weaponry. After cutting down the Eternus Jack Hunter, the Hellion moved closer to the central turbine. The Sentinel then blasted Harlan Sec with his Starfire Array. The Lone Saber moved closer to the nearest turbine and cut into Prince's armor, but the Reaver survived the attack, just barely. An Oculus and Demon stepped through onto the battlefield. And the Saber Warrior opened another Void Gate near Pulse. A turn is Continuum. Turn 3. Feeling the strain of having his Arcanescent spread so thin, Neron pulled a measure back from a void gate. The Eternus Warcaster then sent a nullifying blast into the Sentinel. Before his immortal weaver discharged a sonic wave crashing into Pulse.
finally destroying the massive warjack. The grafter attempted to carve into the Imperium Weaver, but the Oculus' serpentine movement made it difficult to find his mark. Guiding Harlan Sex's movement through arcane manipulation, the Eternus Warcaster drove him to fire a burst towards the demon. The newly repaired Scourge stepped through the gate, ready to seek revenge on the Empyrean force. Sek then deployed a gate between the two most southern turbines. Empyreans. Turn 3. Draska charged Nova and urged the Warjack to lash out at the Scourge and Reavers. The Oculus tried to finish what the demon started. Astrius, a fulcrum, and another factotum stepped through the gate, swarming the cultists in the north. Pulse Round 3 Eternus Continuum Turn 1 The Nomark re-energized Nox and recalibrated his close-range weapons. The Grafter worked to repair the Warjack before sending him barreling into both the Oculus and Nova. His Wrecking Claw attacks missed, but his Force Watch slammed the demon into a nearby stone wall. <laughs> Lastly, Nox sprayed Nova in corrosive muck. Yet another marauder, named Mach, stepped through the Void Gate. Neron hoped he'd fare better than his predecessors. Empyreans. Turn 1. After charging Nova again, the Empyrean Warcaster instructed the demon to protect the servitors around him while lashing out at the Continuum forces moving in on their position. The War Machine devastated Sergeant Tarvis with its Gravitronic Lash. His Nova Cannon erupted next, spraying both Nox and the Grafter. The Demon then plunged his Plasma Blade through Brax's chest severing the vassal's spine.
the Oculus shot Nox point blank with its consecrator. The force of the blast tore through his cortex, utterly destroying the Warjack. Channeling a cipher through the Oculus, Draska erupted a violent blast of energy onto the grafter. The mechanosurgeon crumbled under the weight of the attack. The weaver was unharmed despite being in the proximity of the explosion. A turn is continuum. Turn two. Neron boosted both Harlan Sec and Mach and directed them to swarm Astrius and the Factotum. Sec's dual attack severely injured the Aeon and left him stunned in the end. The Marauder Shredder spun to life, damaging the Factotum. The Fulgrim nearby deflected the rounds that came its way. Sending a surge of cursed energy through Vale, Neron removed the Factotum from existence in a torrential explosion. A new squad of Reavers, led by Sergeant Vax, deployed to support the Immortal Weaver's position. Empyreans Turn 2 Draska charged her fulcrum and sent the remaining Saber Strike Force warrior advancing towards Harlan Sec. The fulcrum repositioned itself to interfere with the Northern Turbine's operation and fired its void cannon into the mercenary. Sek's armor was pierced, and the curator found himself teleported to the other side of the hay bales. Seeking to end the nuisance of Harlan Sek, the Saber Warrior moved to the central turbine and shot down the mercenary. Tried to cut into the Marauder next, but Mach deflected the blow. Draska forced the Saber to exhaust its storage of arc to prepare it to act again as needed. The Aeon then shielded the Saber with a protective force field and sent another factotum to the battlefield. Turn is Continuum. Turn 3. Charging the Reavers, Neron reiterated their need to unleash a wave of offense onto the Empyrean threat. Vale tried to destroy the last Saber, but a psychokinetic blast nearly took out the Central Turbine. Neron cursed the Weaver's errant attack. The Nomark sent his Reavers to protect the Turbine and discharged an onslaught of violence onto the assembled Empyreans. Astrius and the Saber fell to the Vassal's fusion saws.
but the factotum only suffered minor damage despite the torrent of nails they fired into it. The squiddy servitor's luck did not last, however. Neron bathed the factotum in flames, scorching its circuitry and shutting it down completely. Empyreans. Turn 3. Desperate to nullify the Eternus threat before they were able to fully power the planet's void gate, Draska readied her force for one final retaliatory strike. The folk were moved to engage Private Dar near the central turbine, slaying the Reaver with its void cannon. Nova repositioned by the northern turbine and could just barely sight in on the remaining vassals. His gravitronic lash crushed Sergeant Vax. But Colin ducked below the Nova cannon blast that followed. The acid continued to eat into the demon's armor, burning its way into his inner workings and shutting down Nova's systems as they corroded away. With both the northern and southern turbines continuing to supply power, Fargon's planetary gate crackled to life. Draska knew the day was lost when she observed a throng of vassals and Eternus warjacks pouring through the void gate to reinforce Neron's cohort.